guys it's cold outside it's cold outside yeah <laughs> hi guys it's jamila welcome back to my channel today we're doing a recent reads video slash what i'm reading video slash chaotic energy on i'm hella excited because I haven't done one of these in forever. I haven't done a wrap up in forever. I just feel revitalized right now. My mom has my baby and I have time to just have a little me time. You know what I'm saying? I love my baby. No doubt about it. I love my baby. But if you're a mom, you know we need <laughs> a little <laughs> mommy time okay so yeah i just want to talk about some of the books that i'm really reading and feeling and not feeling and all those things i was gonna do like a october wrap up or whatever but i'm not doing that no more so here we go before i get into the tea about the books that i've read recently i just want to share a business by my friend tahira from sincerely tahiri yes we need to talk about these because you know being postpartum having a baby barely three months ago you know sometimes you feel a little down like you need to boost yourself up and that's what these right here these frames are doing for me right now <laughs> okay that was weird anyways now let me show you guys so these i'll definitely insert a clip but these are so freaking cute so they're half rim frames and they have little charms on the end looks like little crystals all across and then these are like stars y'all can't see but they're stars and they're cute as hell so I just had to take a moment to do that because yes and let me continue just a little bit more sorry guys I just I just I can't so they came in this cute case and by the way guys I'm not like <laughs> sponsored or anything I did get this with my own money I just thought they'd be so cute in pictures but it came in this cute cute case right here i'm just feeling so proud i love seeing black women flourish i love seeing my friends flourish i love seeing muslim black women living their best life and accomplishing their goals and it just it's inspiring oh girl my setup is crazy right now i'm sitting on the floor i just wanted to try something different i literally changed my books around just for this I think I am going to start like sitting down here, but whatever. We'll see. Anyways. All right. So to start things off, let me open my Goodreads. I've been trying to use this daggone app. So let's start off with A Torch Against the Night by Sabata here. This book, honey. It's so weird. I end up loving Sabata here's book so far. This is my second book by her that I've read and... I end up loving them but for whatever reason the first half of the books always take me like forever and it's not that it's slow paced or anything I don't know what it is we'll see how the third book goes this is the second book in this I think it's a quartet is that four is quartet four it's it's the second book and in this book I was so I didn't think I would be excited for this because in the first book the character Helene like I didn't hmm, I didn't vibe with her at all in this book we got Helene's perspective and it was something I did not know I needed and I appreciate it a lot like it really really amped up the story for me I really liked her perspective a lot of the time and compared to Laya and Elias, like for some reason, I really enjoyed her chapters a bit more. Yeah, and I don't know, I just had like a whole turnaround. I ended up liking her character quite a bit. And I'm wondering where her character is going to go in the next two books. And I really hope it's somewhere good. Just like some of the things that happen in this book really have me hype for the third book. There was a plot twist in here that I just did not see it coming and it was just it was what I needed. I was shook. But yeah I ended up giving A Torch Against the Night four stars. 
because the second half of the book really just like once I picked it back up like I jumped right back in and it was amazing I don't know this could if the next two books are amazing I really feel like this could be a series that I really really love okay so the next book I read Satoko and Nada volume 2 I read this one and this is a short it's pretty short manga series I think there's only two volumes out so far I don't know how much further it will go but it's pretty much about these two girls one's from Japan and one is from Saudi Arabia and they are rooming together in America and they are experiencing the American culture together and learning about each other's cultures as well it's very cute and honestly I'm not gonna lie I be reading this and like learning about Saudi Arabian culture I don't know how accurate it is not gonna lie I'm not Saudi Arabian I'm not Arab I'm not you know I'm a black woman living in America from America so I don't know how true all of it is like it was really funny because I kept asking my husband like questions about like what was going on in this manga and what it was explaining about Saudi Arabia because he's been there he went one time uh, after we first got married I didn't go I've never been there and I was just like is that really what it's like no but I do like the way this manga even though there will be certain things of their cultures that the other person is like oh I didn't know that or it may not be as accepted in say American culture they still approach it like okay this is someone else's culture just because you don't understand it just because you don't necessarily agree with it doesn't mean you have to disrespect it and I just really like that vibe because I think we need to learn how to respect the fact that not every culture is the same not everything in a culture that's normal for them is going to feel normal for us and vice versa like and I do feel like there's a problem with us as Americans feeling like we're the center of everything and that everything has to be held to a standard beside America and American culture and I just feel like that's like not right and I say we because even sometimes I find myself thinking of America as this standard standard to compare everything to and that's just not fair to other cultures or countries or anything yeah so anyways I'm rambling but I did really enjoy this and I ended up giving this five stars <laughs> I gave this five stars because I flew through it I enjoyed it it made me smile it made me laugh and that's just really all I was looking for from this manga series so the next book that I read you guys you guys this is one of my new favorite books of all time and that is The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow baby so this book puts together so many things that I really enjoy it is about it is about a girl named Janelle who by the way is black we love to see it black main character it's about a girl named Janelle and she's living in our world which has been colonized by an alien race and in this alien race there's pretty much like these high Elori aliens and then there are the lab maids who are like the lower class I guess you could say and they the story also follows a lab maid named okay so I listened to the audiobook for some of this and it was pronounced m 01 is it follows him so Janelle is pretty much running this secret library in this world colonized by aliens and the aliens do not allow contraband such as books music entertainment type things and there's just a lot of strict rules so if she's caught with this library she could be killed they only get certain strikes and certain things they do end up possibly getting them one more strike towards being executed so yeah um but pretty much you have Janelle who is a girl who has the library and then you have m 01 is who is he's obsessed with music and he loves music so much but he's not supposed to so anyways I don't know I'm explaining this 
horribly you guys that's one of my goals for 2021 explain books better so this book just has so many things that i love had a very cute cinnamon roll m01 is, is literally so freaking adorable both of them so much but him the most like i loved him so much something else i also liked about this book was the whole alien invasion takeover i've always been a fan of that trope and I just I just love this like oh my goodness and not just that the social commentary in this book the fact that it's so realistic the world has freaking been colonized by aliens but of course you still have racists you still have all kinds of like real problems that did not just disappear because aliens colonized the world like it's still a problem so good the writing is so good I completely and utterly enjoyed this book so freaking much i highly recommend it to you guys to check it out at least like from the library if you can or something because this book is everything i loved it i absolutely positively with all my heart loved it and this book is definitely i don't even have to look okay this book is five stars one hundred thousand <laughs> percent it's amazing. The next book I finished was Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This book did not do it for me. So granted I did read each half of this book at different times. I read the first half of this book at the beginning of the year and I just now read the second half. When I was reading it at the beginning of the year, I'm not gonna lie, I remember it not being spectacular to me and reading the second half I did feel the same way. This book I just I can understand how someone who can relate to this would enjoy it but I just can't really relate. Um, So this book follows Frank Lee. He's American but his parents are from Korea and it touches on him being a child of immigrant parents. Uh, it touches on racism. Frank Lee wants to date this white girl or whatever but his parents don't approve of anyone who's not Korean and he ends up pairing up with a Korean friend to fake date and act like they're seeing each other when both of them are seeing somebody who's not Korean. I really thought I would like this so much more because it has the fake dating trope but it just I don't know it just kind of fell a little flat for me and you guys know like I'm not the biggest contemporary person and I should know by now that I can't just pick up any contemporary book it has to be very 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 specific and I think that's where I went wrong with this but I did end up giving this book two and a half stars it wasn't awful like the writing was fine and all of that it just didn't hit as like something great for me we're just gonna put this down now Moving on, the next book I read was Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and baby, this is another five star read. I love this book so much. Like, I don't often like contemporary books. I used to be obsessed with like romance books, but I fell off when I started to fall more in love with fantasy and this book brought me back okay first of all this book the writing i feel like people do not when they mention this book a lot of the time they don't talk about how great the writing is in this book it's so good like honestly i feel like when you read romance books a lot of the time the writing is just you know it's there it ain't doing nothing super special most of the time you're not really there for that anyways i don't know is that just me probably just me I shouldn't generalize but the writing in this is just too beautiful in my opinion I really enjoyed the characters in this book but let me explain so this book is about Chloe Brown she is dealing with a chronic illness she's pretty much always in pain and it's just something she has to live with and she's also a bigger chick you know what I'm saying and then we also have Red who is the main guy character the love interest and he has issues from his past dating experience where he was being abused in his relationship and it's just 
such a good book. It's how they come to be friends and come together and Chloe has a near-death experience and it makes her realize that she needs to do more with her life. So she makes this get a life list with a list of things that she's trying to accomplish and mark off and Redford here is going to help her accomplish those goals. It was very very fun. This book was just so so good i loved like the tension between the two main characters honey this book gets steamy okay and i just everything about it i loved i loved chloe's personality i loved red's personality i loved oh my gosh okay so i'm sorry but every time that red called her button my heart okay i don't know why i just thought that was the cutest thing ever five out of five stars amazing fantastic definitely definitely recommend this if you're looking for an adult contemporary romance because this was it for me okay so moving on to the books that i'm reading that i have not finished so i'm almost done with orange i don't know why i'm reading this so slow it's ridiculous. I don't know why I'm reading this so slow. It's ridiculous, but I am still really enjoying that this manga is still sad as hell. <laughs> so no new updates there really. God's Grave, I have not I don't I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm turned off by Jay Kristoff uh and that whole Twitter thing. But I have not picked this book back up. So we'll see how that goes. I'll update y'all at the end of the year to let you know if I ever finish this. <laughs> Probably. And then I'm also reading All American Muslim Girl by Nadine Jolie Courtney. And to be honest with you, I'm about 66 pages into this book. And so far, I'm a bit concerned that I'm not going to end up liking this book. Hurts my soul to say, I don't want to judge it too early. I'm not even 100 pages in, but it's just like, I'm not 100% relating to the main character. I'm not saying yet that it's a bad book, but I'm not. It ain't love from A to Z level, you know what I'm saying? I'm obviously going to keep reading and see how this goes. So far, I find the main character to be, like, I like her passion. I like her passion and I like her attitude. That a little bit reminds me of myself, but... And just like her her whole lifestyle i i don't find it very relatable you know having parents who are just totally non-practicing muslims and her dad almost her dad doesn't even sound muslim to be honest with you because pretty much the requirement for being a Muslim is believing in God. And I do not remember which part of this, but he pretty much straight up says that he doesn't believe. So he would not be considered a Muslim. So I don't know if she just, she does believe in God and that makes her a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't know if she, it seems like she just really considers herself Muslim in name, which is something I always have a problem with in books and I'm hoping it resolves itself, but I'm not hopeful. And her dad is just aggravating in my opinion. And also kind of like the culture in this book, like I don't really relate to that very much. I obviously do relate to some of the terms that all Muslims of all cultures use. Inshallah, mashallah, like alhamdulillah, all of that. I, I relate to that. I mean and also the discrimination part. Like people people always associating Muslims with terrorism and stuff like that when in reality terrorists come in all shapes and forms. They're just bad people who do bad things for selfish reasons and so far not wowed by it. I do find her little romance to be super juvenile and that could just be because I'm pretty much a grown ass woman now and I just ugh. I'm not I'm noticing more and more that I'm not really finding myself being into teenage romance and angst because it's just so I don't know I'm just not into the whole first love thing even though my husband is my first love it's just like corny and I was never like that so I just in general 
I don't really relate to it. But right now, I say from what I've read so far, this book is a two star. So we'll see what I end up rating it once I finish it. Like I said, I'm judging it pretty early, so don't take anything I say. Take it. Take everything I just said with a grain of salt. Oh shoot, I forgot I was recording, y'all. <laughs> my mom just sent me a picture of my baby. She said she was being fussy, and she sent me a picture of her asleep. But anyways. Okay, the next book. Before I even hold this book up, just know I'm not saying to go buy this Heffa's books or anything like that. If you want to read these books, I really highly suggest you buy them used and do not support this Heffa. But anyways, um, I don't want to trigger nobody. But I am currently reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by the heifer that we do not know. I am currently reading this and I was turned off for a good bit just because J.K. Rowling is just kind of dumb. But to me, as a person who personally has always loved the series and who has always felt like J.K. Rowling's an idiot, it was really nothing new for me when she just like really showed her ass on Twitter. So I was never supporting her. I was never following her. I don't care for her as a person, but I do unfortunately care for this series. But you know, we all can read what we wanna read while also acknowledging that a lot of the authors that we have on our shelves are hella problematic. It may not be people we want to support some of you guys, you know, there's a lot of people who support so many problematic authors and do it with a smile on their face. I'm just saying, I'm reading this book, but I'm not saying to buy Harry Potter. Just don't do it. If you want it, get it secondhand so she doesn't, you know, get new sales. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Anyway, I am reading this and something that I am finding, of course, being on the third book is that she who must not be named obviously has an obsession with presenting evil people as being fat and focusing really hard on fatness and trying to say that being fat is ugly that's i don't know maybe that's just me what i'm getting from it and i just think i don't really remember that from reading it as a child but i just feel like that's not a good message for kids you don't want them to feel like it's okay to talk bad about somebody just because they're bigger. I, I find that a little bit disturbing reading it as an adult. However, I will say that honestly, it feels comforting to be in this world because to be honest, I've read these books at a time in my life where I needed them most. So they do have sentimental value, but I am seeing a lot as an adult with this that I did not see as a kid. And it's interesting to me to evaluate this series from a different lens. But yeah, I'm spending way too much time on this. Let's put this away, guys. The next book I am reading and almost done with is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. This book is a series of novellas from the Throne of Glass series. And I am on... I I think this is the assassin in the underworld and i have one more novella after this which is the assassin in the empire i'm enjoying this decently enough it's not anything special or that's going to be a favorite but there are some events that i'm looking forward to see how they play out at the end of this book and i'm a little bit nervous because this book is really making me fall for sam Cortland. and we all know if you've read throne of glass and crown of midnight you know what's up with that so <laughs> I, I'm enjoying this pretty decently. I would say so far it's three stars. Nothing is incredible about it, but it's a fun read and that's pretty much what I go into Sarah J Mass books for. And then the last book that I'm currently reading and almost done with is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Baby, I did not expect to love this book this much. I am very close to the end here. I'm on page 435 and the book is 498 pages. So I'm so close to the end. I'm probably gonna finish this tonight and I'm so excited to finish. I thought I was gonna love this, but I really, really do love this. However, I don't know if I should rate it five stars because there's just... I don't know like I feel like this is a book 
that gives me thrill like it definitely gives me thrill it has a lot of things that I really like um so just to explain this book this is about a girl named Esta and she can time travel pretty much she's a part of this found family pretty much she has to travel to the past to collect these ancient artifacts like that's what she does so now her final job she has to go back to 1902 to complete a heist for this last artifact and it's very important because there is a uh, this thing called the brink that is blocking off the city and Essa is a mages and pretty much mages they all have magic and they are going up against these people called the order who do not like people with magic and the order have created this thing called the brink that people who have magic cannot cross or they will die her mission of getting these artifacts is to stop the order and destroy the brink so we have time travel we have magic her trying to stop this person that she only knows as the magician it is a very very good book for me i cannot see myself rating this less than four stars but we shall see because the end is near the book is almost done i probably am going to be done with this like very very soon so i am so excited and i'm so so happy that i already have the devil's thief i'm so happy that i already have that and i just want to thank nicole from nicole and her books again for giving me this book because it's amazing i am loving it oh and you guys i said that was the last book but i forgot another book um so i'm also reading the night circus by aaron morgenstern so far i will say it is a tiny bit slow but not in a bad way i'm just like kind of going through it and i'm enjoying the atmosphere of this book it has like this very i don't know like the writing is very descriptive but it's not overly wordy in my opinion it really just it sets a vibe and i feel it and this is the perfect time of year in my opinion to read this book because it's so atmospheric it really like transports you and engulfs you into the story and i'm loving it so far i think i'm about i'm not that far in here oh wow i feel like i read way more than that but i'm 56 pages into the night circus and I feel like this could potentially be a book that I really love if it has interesting things going on for the rest of the book. So, so far, so good. I just really enjoy the writing. I don't know, it just really sets, like there's books that just really set a picture in your mind and I feel like this book does that for me. So that is all of my recent reads. I'm having a grand old time reading all of these and not all of them, but <laughs> I'm having a grand time just in general just reading it's very exciting to be back into reading it's a very hard to read granted with a baby girl she just turned three months yesterday i wish she was here so i could show you guys her she's gotten so big but yeah definitely enjoying getting back into reading this definitely has been a horrible reading year as far as the numbers but i don't want to focus on that because i'm gonna get depressed but we'll see how many books i end up reading at the end of the year to meet my reading goal which is only 20 books for this year i will need to finish about 11 books by the end of december and i think i could do it if i focus on it so and you know it is what it is like i'm really learning that you don't have to read a certain amount of books to be considered a reader if you read you read you don't have to read a certain type of way like it's just enjoy your life don't let the numbers get to you okay okay that's what i have learned in this situation and i'm gonna keep enjoying myself because these stories some of these stories are just hidden gems waiting to be discovered and that's my focus thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys next time bye <laughs>